And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Naya Hero. So you used to call this deck Naya Feather, uh, you know, basically the same deck as what we've had for Naya Feather that we've played, you know, around like five times or so, but deciding to rebrand it here into just calling it Naya Hero instead of Naya Feather, you know, because we're really based more around Hero Precinct 1 than Feather the Redeemed, to be honest. And that was kind of the feedback that I got from some people that they would, uh, that they wanted, you know, a different looking deck for a, for a, you know, quote unquote feather deck. So let's go with Naya Hero. Um, we are, you know, a Naya aggro deck uh, with all these multicolor cards. They, you know, we're, we're playing both of those cards. We're trying to take advantage of Hero Precinct 1. And then, of course, we're trying to take advantage of Feather the Redeemed also with these 11 um, <clears throat> multicolored instants that can target our own creatures. We have Coloss Colossus. Thrash and Integrity. The things that I really like about these 11 cards, though, is they're not like cards that are just reliant on casting on our own creatures and like that's all they can do. Like they can't do anything else at all. They can still, like, you know, do other things. If we don't have creatures in play or if we need them to do other things, they can. You know, like we can make four, we can just have four mana four fours. You know, like if we just have, like, if we're just kind of flooding out. Sorry, if we're just kind of flooding out, instead of like having the removal spell with Thrash, we can just play four mana four fours. You know, like there's, it's not like spectacular, but there's nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> if we need to kill Flyers, we can with Collision. That one's a little bit, a little bit sketchy, which is why I'm only playing the three, because, you know, they have to be playing a Flyer for that. But then Integrity, you know, if we don't need to give a creature plus two, plus two, we can just deal three damage to any target, gain three life. Like, that's a de definitely a reasonable card to be playing as well. Main change I made since the last time I played it is I'm taking Tajik out of the deck and moving a couple Knight of Autumns over in the main deck, because Knight of Autumns is just really strong against kind of everything. And uh, so, and especially like aggro, I want to be a little bit better against aggro game one. So we have these over here. And then instead of Swiftblade Vindicator, I'm going to try Zertok Goblin with the haste ability there uh, with the riot or just being a two mana three three also since we since i took out the two knight of autumns from the cyborgs I, I used to have four then we got room for an extra deafening clarion because that card's so great against aggro and same with lyra because that's kind of like the losses that we we're getting were against some aggro decks so i, I feel like we're going to be pretty good against uh control decks or you know good enough hopefully that is anyway that's our deck Naya Frenzy or Naya Hero. Uh, I would say Frenzy over Risk Factor if you're for Mono Red. I like Frenzy more. All right, Naya Hero. Let's play through a league. Yeah, we got a Tristani in the sideboard for the mass manipulation decks. We got one of those. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Let's see if we draw this red source. That would be nice. That would be really nice now. Oh, I just played these in the wrong order. Whoops. Oh, well, we'll take two life. Red mana. Bethel Freak! With the big time cheer. Thanks, Bethel Freak. Yep, Bethel got us that, that uh, luck to get the red source. For sure, brought that in. Um... I'm going to cast Thrash on their turn. You would 
make an excellent informant for my They don't study. know I'm going to be doing that. To the library. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we can attack for eleven next turn. I mean, I know I can do like the three damage to the the Tamiyo also. Hmm. That makes it 13. All right, so it looks like... Looks like Soltai... Um, command the Dread Horde. Let's replace a Knight of Autumn with a Tristani. <clears throat> and because we're probably going to want a coil do I need more coils All right, I'm going to trim one integrity and one collision also for some more coils. Man, this Vanifar has been really nice to us today. Here are Precinct 1 into Gruel Spellbreaker. That's what I'm talking about. Legionnaire can do a whole lot of damage here later on, too. But we're just kind of setting up right now. We're just in the setup phase. I think my arena needs a, a reset, also, thinking of. Speaking of. Setup. N is there any good hybrid one drops besides Footlight Fiend? Is the question. Hmm. I don't really think of any. I'm take another turn off here, play this thing. Hey, what's up, Punk Boy RD? Thanks for that resub there. That is sub number 10 on the day. Boom. Hitting that sub goal. So help remind me to crack a pack after this. And Thrash works well with Spellbreaker too, like on your own turn, like how the Spellbreaker has Hexproof. Ugh. Gross. All right, come on, land drop. So if I would have hit the land drop, I would just play Legionnaire attack and be able to Colossus it. Yeah, I'm still going to play the... Legionnaire here. We will not fail. Land drop. Land drop. The land shall conquer you. Land drop. Come 
Come on, deck. No, that's bad. Oh, I needed that. Well, I mean, I can kill Nissa, but... That cast down, that was a killer. I mean, well, the Massacre Girl was a killer, too. They both were. Can't stay alive because the Masker Girl having menace. Hmm. Masker Girl, huh? No. Yeah, I was debating like whether I should move away from Hero Precinct 1 because of that, but no. I know we were supposed to root for Todd, but that was a nice massacre, girl. <laughs> Slow hand with having all tap lands. Which is going to happen with our deck, though. We've gotten stuck on three lands now here, both of these last two games, like where we just don't get to double spell right away on turn four. It's really hurt us. You know, our opponent's obviously double spelling. Like they were double spelling on turn three because of Land War Elf. I guess I should block first. Yeah, I mean, I should just be blocking first. Definitely need to just be blocking that Ripjaw first. Ugh. Yeah, I don't, that was that was really bad. I mean, I the reason why I did it like that was to try to make like the extra one one, but that was just such a such a greedy play. But I guess like being down this much, I got to go for the greedy plays. Just awesome, awesome hand for them. 
GG. I mean, turn one elf, turn two jade light, turn three cast down plus branch walker, and then an, another elf and a ripjaw, and then a trophy plus a big crisis. Good call. Thanks, Punk Boy, Punk Boy RD. Let's crack that pack. Got to that 10 subs. Uh, 20 gems. So I am I am out of War of the Spark Rares now. Officially. And let's do the arena reset too, as we we're talking about how it's how it was lagging with decisions and everything. My last rare I opened up was actually a Casualties of War. That was the one, that was the the last rare I got. We have 23 lands, so it's not surprising to get stuck on three. You know, like, we prefer to get four, but we don't really want, like, more than four because we are, uh, we don't have, like, car like, too much card advantage in the deck. It's so, like, that's, that's not too surprising getting stuck on three like that. I mean that that that'll happen. Our opponent curved out really really well those two games. Uh, I mean really it was like you know it was the massacre like their curve out game three was amazing and then the massacre girl game two. Those defeated us. Um, pro hunts. Is it Drake's? Is is honestly not a. It's not really an inconsistent deck as far as decks and magic go. It's actually it's one of the more consistent ones because it has so much card draw in there with all the ops and charter courses and everything like that. Like it, it actually is a consistent deck. Um, it's not. It's not a very easy one to play with all that card draw and everything, but uh, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty consistent one. I think I think if you compare it to like the other decks in standard, you'd be uh, pleased with its consistency. Um. But yeah, that specific deck, that's not one that I, I've i played very much. It's not one that I... Yeah, it's just not one that I've... I usually just play against it a lot. Like, uh, look, This looks to be more like Phoenix, but... I want Spellbreaker. Let's go bottom. No, yeah, so so I won't be playing that deck anytime soon, but uh, I'm sure like like that deck has been you know played like a lot by by different streamers and everything. I think if you if you kind of like YouTube search, you know, is it Drake's content? I, I'm sure you can find some some good stuff. Um, there may there may be like some some sideboard guides and stuff like that too. It hasn't seen as much play with War of the Spark standard. It saw a lot of play you know last format, but it's still good knowledge that you can be that you can use to help you out all right so against phoenix we're going to want these lava coils and take out night of autumns
Maybe a, a thrash. Them having the instant speed removal. Because I don't really want a Johnny here, actually. Yeah, let's take out that a Johnny, bring in these Lyras also, and I'm gonna take out a thrash. All right, that looks good. Yeah, there you go. So there's there's a link to kind of help you out, but that's that's Phoenix. That may be different than your uh, Drake deck, but that could also that could help though. All right, so we need white mana, and then even if we get white mana, just kind of have a bunch of creatures. Hmm. That's fine. We're up a game. Like, if I'm, like, down the game, I'm probably not keeping this. But we, I could see my opponent just having a bunch of burn spells and uh, giving us time. <clears throat> They're not always, like, the fastest deck. Here. Um, after sideboarding, because, you know, like, they try to go the control route. <sighs> Give us some time to draw some white... White sources. I'm gonna to try to wait on hero before I can like play hero and play something else to get the value out of it. But I mean that value is only like a little one one, which I guess doesn't do a whole lot for us. Hey JRC, yeah, it's been a really, really good day today. Thanks, Hondry. Thanks for that help there. Alright, integrity is perfect to help save this feather from a coil. And speaking of coil, my opponent already has like a lot of a lot of mana and everything. I think I want to save my coil for an arc light or a crackling drake. Wow. Well, I guess we can coil our own feather, I suppose. Yeah, plot twist. No, I wouldn't necessarily say that Gruel Arc Bow was better than Bant. I still like Bant quite a bit. But Gruel is good, though. Vivian's Arc Bow is just a really solid card. Alright, so it looks like Red Finale. Isn't the worst for us. Get that out of there and Sure. A melody of one one. Whatever. Not a bad trade for us. It's how good that red finale is. Alright, no more lands now, deck. Kind of the problem with Aurelia, Aurelia does not block Crackling Drake at all. I guess I'm, 
like, I guess I should be bringing in Tristani in this matchup, I suppose. They're playing Entrancing Melody. Why? Just attack. Hmm. Let's take out the two goblins. Let's get some Chandra's in here. No, not Tristani. Want some extra card advantage because you know, like they really, you know, because they are like the control deck here. Want some extra card advantage, and I'm going to just take out these two drops that uh, are very easy, like the die very easily. All right, basically the exact same hand we had last time. We had like all these cards. It didn't work out. Let's see if it does this time. With Feather being legendary and us having two, I'm gonna be leading with Feather next turn. <clears throat> so if there's a lava coil over there. Keep the spellbreaker around. Uh, correct chivalry I don't I um, I stream all the time now that's what I'm doing every day but no I don't I don't play paper anymore two phoenixes it's gonna be tough it's gonna be tough Fast turn. Fast turn. No, don't do it. Yes. Yay. So go on Spellbreaker Haste so that I can attack for eight. What? They could have just opted on their turn and, and grabbed both Phoenixes back, and they didn't? Wow. They just didn't want their Phoenixes in play. Wow, they're just like, no, nah, that's all right. Do I shock in for this? They're saving the spell pierce mana. So many burn spells.
Give me back that thrash. No, Domery would not have been game. Right? Or wait. Oh, I guess Domery fight and thrash? Yeah, I guess we could have done both of those. Yeah, I guess if, if they didn't have the spell pierce, which they didn't because they didn't counter that. <laughs> yeah. Fight plus thrash. Oh, well. Still got there. <laughs> I don't really know how we get punished from there, to be honest. I guess if the, the thrash was countered, yeah, spell pierced. That's how it could get counted. That's how it could. No, Crushian, no, I didn't. Just decided to stop playing Paper Magic. Just want to stay home and stream. That's what I'm doing full time. Yeah, this Naya deck's pretty sweet. So we got just a real aggressive hand here with like the goblins and the colossuses. Not much staying power. Uh, looks like that's going to be good enough against four cards. Uh, well, likely will be good enough. Well, play the Legionnaire because uh, the Legionnaire can get pretty big with the Colossus there. All right. Yeah. Traveling's traveling to tournaments all the time is pretty rough, though. I just got I got pretty tired of it. Just wanted to stay home. Um, it takes a toll on you for sure. Horse tribal. So yeah, I decided to just stay home, start streaming each day, and focus on, uh, you know, like, making good content here. You know, started the YouTube channel this year, um, you know, here in 2019, and growing that, and, and doing that instead of playing tournaments. And all the expenses and wear and tear from travel and everything. Let's see. They're just kind of playing stuff. Let's just let's just keep our game one plan here. Got to bring back Naya value. Can we do that? What what are we doing against a whole bunch of planeswalkers with Naya value? Like how is what are we how are we beating how are we being Nissas? I'm 
like, you know, Esper Hero. How, how's Naya Valley beating Esper Hero? I'll have to think about that. Yeah, Clarion. Clarion can do some work. Definitely. Yeah, Tamik. Yeah, Tamik's perfect there. The double white is rough, but it's not. You don't need it on turn two anyway. It's just like your like turn four. You double spell with Tamik. Yeah, Tamik's really nice. Time to start attacking. Yep, got the one mana one ones and the two, three mana two twos. That's what we're doing around here. I gotta remember to do that before end step. Didn't come back to me now. Was there a new code from today? I guess it's probably tomorrow the new code's gonna be out, right? Because like the, the event starts tomorrow. The next event. Yeah, Shields Up's the newest one. For Teo. All right. Well, that wasn't too much of a match, but you know, you get paired against what you get paired against. So let's keep on keeping on here. No green mana, but no green cards. You know, we have just hero into hero into 10th District Legionnaire and just kind of seeing where that takes us. But I think this is better than a random six, you know, with hero being a, a strong one. Uh, I don't think that's how you sp spell. Yeah, that's not how you spell Tamik. I think it's with an I. I think that's it. Yeah, so Tamik keeps Nissa from activating on lands because you can't target lands. So Tamik makes Nissa just basically, uh, it still has the passive, but that's it.
<clears throat> if Tamik was one in a white instead of white white, it would see so much more play right now. As like anti Nis attack. But the the white white is pretty tough. Domri's going to pump up all these little 1-1s, one -ones, make them 2-2s. Two It'll be nice if we find green mana. Hopefully no land drops for our opponent still. Green. Green. No green. I don't think Tomiko would be too strong at one in a white. Standard's really, really good. There's lots of really good cards. It would basically move it from seeing no play to seeing play, though. You know, it'd be something that you'd plan around and everything. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how that really affect limited. You know, too, I mean, it is, it's still rare, so you wouldn't see it super often in limited. Oh my gosh, no green mana. Oh yeah, the card the card's good. The card's good for sure. I don't think it'd be too good at one in white. Yeah, like does it does it make it like just a ton better than Hero Precinct one? Mm, I don't know. Where is Stomping Ground? Stomping Ground, right here. Come on, Deck, you can do it. Stomping Ground. Even any of our 11 spells to go with Feather, they would all be really good draws also. Uh, I mean, Green Man is our best draw, though. Let's be fair. Ugh. If we get Green Man, I think we just go like play Domri, tick up, add Green Mana, play Spellbreaker, haste, attack, swing out. I think we just do that. And like, our opponent dies. Yeah, like if we draw green mana, I think our opponent dies. Yep. Rootbound Crag. Sun Petal Grove. 
Temple Garden. Oh, another un unplayable card. I guess maybe I should just play this to make two one ones at this point. Or three one ones. Yeah, maybe I should just play that as three one ones. <laughs> Feather the Redeemed. I don't have a forest in the deck. I have a mountain and a plains. As far as basics go. My old school. So, yeah, Alright, so they're just holding up counter magic now. <laughs> this Boros Feather deck is kind of cool, but what if we made it Naya? Hey! There we go. Alright, well, they definitely just have counter magic this turn, right? So. I guess maybe we lead. Like, maybe we can just wait till next turn for Domri. Does it even make sense for me just to attack out here? So they block my three heroes. Two of their growth chamber guardians die. They go down to they go down to one. Let's do this first. I'm gonna do this first because I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all these these triggers first before I attack <clears throat> and have my heroes die. This seems like a a deck that's trying to steal all my stuff, so I'm gonna have some Tristanis in here. <laughs> And maybe a couple Clarions. They're playing a bunch of mana creatures, maybe. I don't know. Didn't see a whole lot. We'll play two Clarions. Yeah, we have had a good day today with our decks, that's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Team chat needs to get ready for tomorrow. We're gonna have ugh, we're gonna have the sub battle stream day tomorrow, three to ten Eastern time. Bring your favorite deck. Play against me if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, sit back, watch, t cheer on team chat. <laughs> Alright, this Clarion looks a little silly. I could, you know, like not play the Legionnaire and wait and try to Clarion the next turn, but they didn't play any mana creatures, so. Yeah, this is the feather list. Uh, I'm rebranding it as Naya Hero because it's more of a, a hero deck than a feather deck uh, in general. But, yep, that's what this deck is. All right, so if I go, like, Frilled Mystic. So, like, if I try Aurelia and then there's a Frilled Mystic, 
that would be annoying. So let's go Spellbreaker so that if there's Frilled Mystic, we still get to attack through it. Because, you know, if I try Aurelia, then I wouldn't be able to pump my creature at all. Yep, so, yep, you got in right in time. No, it looks like a melody. In the world. Hmm. Good scry. The Nth Vector. Thank you very much for that sub there. I really do appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Let's get those hype boats out here. Our 11th sub of the day. All right, should I, I should put an upkeep stop here because <clears throat> we have this 10th District Legionnaire. That I can uh, integrity upkeep. I guess I can just integrity right now. Also, I should. Good, get that scry. The Barnzo! Keeping that hype going. Thanks, Barnzo. Um, so if I go... Uh, So Barnes is our 12th sub of the day. Thanks after Wizard getting those hype butts in there. I don't even know if that Clarion was really that good, to be honest. Honestly, the more I think about it, I think just playing Aurelia is probably better. Could have integrity the feather and then played Aurelia and you know, make it so they have to chump block both creatures, then I'd, I would be able to have both my creatures still in play. 
<clears throat> and the Aurelia in play also, so we could have all three creatures in play. And if they didn't, if they didn't chump block both of them, then the intervention would have finished them off. Shields up. That one is uh, Teo. So yeah, I, I shouldn't have played the Clarion. Should have gone Aurelia um, and not integrity my 10th District Legionnaire upkeep. integrity the other thing. We did keep ourselves from drawing this extra land, so that was, that was okay. We did keep ourselves from drawing those three lands. Oh well, as long as they don't have a negate, we can finish this off with integrity. We also like just we also just don't necessarily need to risk it. I could just, you know, wait to try to have intervention. No, let's let's go for it. All right. It worked. Yeah, the Golgari or the Golgari graveyard deck, it it played well. It played good against control decks. It, you know, it was out grinding the control decks um, with, like, people weren't really prepared for Molder Hulks keep, uh, coming back all the time and everything. JRC. This is longtime subscriber of the channel. We got the sub battle stream early. <laughs> All good, JRC. Good luck. Yeah, a little sneak preview for tomorrow's uh, match, uh, for tomorrow's stream. Feather. No, it does not. No, you'd still have, you'd have to pay nine life to grab. Uh, to grab with to grab Mulder Hulk with command the Dread Horde. I think JRC's playing Bantark Bow here. I feel like my 
my last version of Bantarkbo at least. Uh, like the one before, uh, like the one before the Resplendent Angel. Nothing but dust when I'm done. Going aggro here. Not gonna really beat Lyra. Yay, no Lyra. Smells rotten. Wait, that might be me. Hmm. Well, didn't activate Girl Chamber Guardian. JRC, no. Forgot to do that. Trust me, you'll thank me later. So we're playing in events where you play until you win five, uh, until you win five or you lose one, and so that's why or lose two. So you know we won won all five with both of these. The Gruel Arcbow that was in ranked, and in ranked I just play five matches, and so we just played just played the five matches there. So I could have had Domri fight the Growth Chamber Guardian, but then, you know, I lose the the point of power on all these, so then I just have a 3-3, three, three, a 3-3, three, three, and a 2-2. Two, two. We want to keep the... I'll just keep the Domri around. Yeah, Jersey is a little nervous there. Well, this is going to be honestly pretty difficult for me. Like Lyra is going to be really hard for me to beat. We have the collisions, like that's what we got is collisions. I guess we have thrashes also. Yes, yeah, so we got thrashes and collisions. Um we're going to want all the Knight of Autumns. Gonna take out the goblins. And Oh yeah, definitely stoked about M20. I'm always stoked for the new sets, like love new sets for sure. Could play my own Lyra. Hmm. I want to think of a Johnny. Yeah, I think I like a Johnny. I'm going to try this. No, core sets are usually like... They, there are reprints, but there's not a lot of reprints. It's not, it's not a ton. Um... You know, just kind of ballparking, like, maybe, like, 30-ish percent reprints. Like, somewhere in, like, the 30 to 50 percent range. Yeah, probably somewhere in there, like, the 30 to 50 percent range. Perfect land.
All right, time to go wide. Which, going wide is exactly what we want to do with the Johnny the Great Hearted. I know my responsibility. Oh, I've done the hero Rude. thing before. All right, lose out on one. One token here. Instead of just playing hero again, let's just get the, that to ferry off the battlefield. Gross. So I can Integrity and Thrash and kill Lyra. I guess I'm going to do that, but I just don't get any... Don't get any hero tokens. I'd like another land. Okay, we'll take that. Yeah, Rave, Rave uh, this is just how I, uh, how I like to present myself in public. All right, so I'll, t I'll trade the Legionnaire for the Oketra, JRC wants to. I think if we would have still had this hero, I would have so many 1-1s. That would be so good for this at Johnny the Greathearted. Taking it. Oh, no. Okay. All right, all right. How am I beating this Oketra now? Unclear. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, that's that's it. Nothing too special there. Sorry, I'm late. And of course, I can't thrash in response to kill the Teferi because we can't play instance. Land drop. Land. Yay. Poor JRC. The problem playing my, my deck against me is I knew exactly, like, how I wanted to sideboard against it, you know, like we knew we wanted to play all these Knight of Autumns normally. Um, you know, somebody may not realize that you won all those Knight of Autumns. Alright, so Hero, even if we blow up Baffling End, Hero is gone for good. We just get the 3 3 Dino. Which, that's what I'm going to do. Oh. Duh. Frilled Mystic. I should have played the 10th District Legionnaire first. Should do this post-combat. Should just play a Legionnaire attack first. Duh. New around here. That was bad. <laughs> I was just talking about how I knew what was going on with the deck, and now I don't.
<laughs> All right, so I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. So it's gonna be difficult to beat this Oketra. <laughs> yep, karma. There. I deserve that. I think Oketra, maybe I'll take this one over now. All right, Rave. Have a good night. Well, one's, one Oketra is already hard to beat. Benefits of peace. Looks like we're going to game three here. Yeah, Spark Double is such a cool card. So I couldn't really save my Legionnaire. I could make it an 8-8. But that's it. Not talking the Spark Double. Benefits of I mean, if we get like a Colossus, oh no. I feel like maybe we can do something. I 
Oh, right. Spellbreaker. Oh, I forgot about that. I wasn't even... Even even how, like, my that 3-3 three, three didn't come up, I didn't even think, say anything. <laughs> yeah, so we don't get the dino because... So Baffling End says target opponent creates a 3-3. Three, three. And we had we have hexproof during our turn because of the spellbreaker. We have hexproof, so they can't target us, so we don't get a three three. No. Ugh, that's another four four. Yeah, Frilled Mystic's awesome. I could just block next turn. We must regroup. Ugh. All right, well, could have played that one better. Um, I'll play Lyra's instead of Aurelia's and get this other Ajani in here too for like battlefield stall, like our Ajani ticking up at encounters. Yeah, Catcher's really nasty. All right, hopefully we get to keep Hero around this time. All right, four of a kind. We got one plan, one plan only. That's playing two, two hastes. JRC can beat a 2 2 haste. We're going to lose. No, our plan's already, already going sideways. Chandra's come in against removal decks for card advantage. Which is 
basically the answer for every planeswalker and sideboards ever. Just like that's a that's a good good shortcut there. <laughs> All four of them. Yeah, it's true. Our creatures are the things going sideways there. Just one blue. So no frilled mystic. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, when you get four of a kind and then phone as deputy. Uh. Let's slow this down. Here we go. I'll bounce the baffling end. Go five at them, put them down to four. We'll just we'll just get to ferry out of here. It's only a matter of hopefully that time. hopefully we don't lose by that one point. Let's do this before we play the Spellbreaker this time. Alright, going wide. Hey, Balding Yeti. Oh. Yeah, so the Spellbreaker knows about the Spellbreaker in hand. So it's not Lyra. Had to shock. There. Draw on the shock land, that was a killer. G G. Good games there, JRC. Those are some fun ones. Oh, some good ones there. Especially that second game. That was a really good game. <laughs> oh good, JRC, you did good. Like you just only had that that one mistake. In the game one that I think that that really hurt you with the, just forgetting to activate the you know just going to the next turn instead of activating the growth chamber guardian. Gruul Arkbo was just a four one because as you can see here with the R there, Gruul Arkbo we played that in ranked. Let me get this final boss playlist up in here. Whenever I play the deck in ranked, I usually just play uh, five rounds and just see how we do in the five rounds and. And the goal for those is to go 3-2, of course. But yeah, I went 4-1. I think I like Bant, the Bant version more. Gruel's, the Gruel version's a lot more aggressive. We got, we were pretty, we got pretty fortunate overall in our pairings, I think, with the Gruel deck, because we played against other creature decks and we were smushing them. Um, no, I'm not the Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, I think I think that's just on PS4, I believe. 
And my only system is, well, like I have, I have a GameCube and I have, I, mean, I guess I have a PS2. I don't have it hooked up, but obviously it's not going to be on PS2. And I have um, Switch. That's what, that's what that thing's called. I have a Switch. And I don't think it's going to be on the Switch, unfortunately. Just like us not drawing another land, it's unfortunate. I've never, I've never like played games on the PS, on the PC except for Arena. Yeah, the old Final Fantasy VII's on the Switch, and I so I have I bought that on the Switch. So I have the Final Fantasy VII on the Switch and on, and I have two copies of it <laughs> for PS2 right now, or like you know it's PlayStation. You you can play it on the PS2, but it's, you know it's PlayStation. So I have two like of the original copies with like the four discs. And I have it on my phone also, so I can play it on my phone. All right, let's let's not go to discard. Let's just go to the next game. Yeah, I, I prefer console to PC. All right, gruel stuff. What do I want to do against gruel stuff? Hmm. Get those in here. All right, here we go. I don't think I. I think their creatures are kind of bigger than Deafening Clarion. I don't think the Clarion is going to help us enough. The Clarion's gonna hurt me more than hurt them. Clarion's more for mono red and mono white, like those decks. Why am I just keeping these hands? This hand's not not a keep at all. This is definitely a mulligan. Uh, I just clicked that so fast. I was like two lands, lava coil, and some other stuff. I'm sure that's good. Now we can't even. We have to. We have no white sources. We need two white sources before we can play feather. Maybe our deck will bail us out. <laughs> Y'all can tell I'm just getting tired here. Uh, should not have kept that. I think I should have sideboarded out some Colossus. Dante, thanks for that sub there. Bring in the luck. Now we're definitely going to draw a white source here after that sub there. Getting that sub luck. White source. All right, well, this was definitely a mulligan. Let's see. Like, one second after I hit the keep button, I was like, that's a mulligan. That's not a keep. And we lose. Where, where? What was the final boss night? This one is going to be a loss after this bad keep, though. All 
All right, yeah, team chat, make sure you're ready for tomorrow. Sub battle stream. I don't, I don't, I don't get out of this at all. Okay, in a tournament, do you think that the rule of not creating a 3-3 with baffling end plus the 3-3 hexproof would have been respected by players might not even know the interactions? I'm not, I don't understand the question. Three, take two, four, six, seven. Take seven here. Take nine. Yeah, and I don't have Clarion. They were a lot more aggro of a Gruel deck than what I thought. If I, you know, if I knew that, if I would have thought that they would have had War Boss Chain Whirler, would definitely would have played the the Deafening Clarions. But that was just not my match at all. Not even close. So, still a good run for Naya Hero. Fun deck to play. I liked the addition of the Goblin and the Knight of Autumn in the main deck. I think that's. I think those cards are worth it. Um, but, uh, yeah, had some mana troubles different times. But that's going to happen with a deck like this, though. Um, but still, good fun deck to play. <laughs> yeah, well, Clarion was definitely killer versus that version of Gruul. The versions of Gruul I've seen recently have, like, Ripjaw Raptor, which you don't want Clarion against, and, and Ferox, and you don't really even want it against Phoenix too much, and just going bigger like that. And and then, you know, even, like, the Spellbreakers being 4-4s. Four but, yeah, against those cards, it would have been really good. So... All right, so that's Nia Hero. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, but again, thank you for watching, and I will see you for another video. Take care.